Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the custom crops as you guys voted for. Now uh, there is uh, some stuff that we need to cover. So there is bone mealing, so you can actually bone meal the different crops and it will update as you wish. Uh, there is the seed drops from grass, uh, you can actually get it from that. I'll place down some more so I can demonstrate that. And you can get the seeds from these. So. Um, it's about the same as regular seeds, so it'll drop about the same amount. I picked up two or three from here, and I destroyed pretty much the same amount as um, the regular grass. I basically filled this whole entire area up, and I got about 12 seeds and about 13 or 12 or 13 seeds for the custom crops. So it's about the same uh, when you're actually getting the seed amount from the grass. Uh, the other thing is, um, basically, what you want to do for your seeds is, it's hard to point out, show you because of the, um, the way this is set up. But if we go over here, we can place down a seed. And it's not very noticeable, but uh, there is a little bit of elevation on the bottom of the block that will actually prevent the crops, the the items uh, being placed down on it, to basically um, not turn the soil to dirt. So if you were to place any block like grass or anything on top of the farmland, by, by default what it's going to do is turn it to dirt. So you can fix that normally by offsetting the lowest part of the block, so just a little bit, and just offsetting it about like 0 0.1 or something um, pixels so it's elevated a little bit higher. And what that will do is it will basically built in the, into the code, it will not detect it as a solid block and rather than a transparent one and it won't destroy the crops, uh, the farmland itself. So that's basically how I've been able to do that um, over the course of the um, custom crops tutorials and stuff like that. So when we break the, um, the ready harvested versions, it will give us our crops and it will also give us seeds back. Again, if we want to use bone meal, we can do that and it will randomly grow the stages. So you, as you can see here, uh, it's random on how many it will take to actually get there. So we can destroy some more. And if we were to break these, you, as you can see, it only gives back the seeds, not the uh, the crops, is it, crops itself. So I think that's all the stuff I need to cover for that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'll make sure to provide the textures and all that uh, for you guys in the workspace um, project files. So let's go into Amp Creator and I'll cover how to basically set it up. Um, I've made it as simple as possible so it's easy to set up and quickly and um, hopefully it will be easier for everyone to follow. Okay, so we have uh, blocks, items, foods, and a tag. So we'll start with the blocks and uh, the blocks themselves, uh, the crops themselves have uh, basically a pretty straightforward system of how they grow and stuff. So uh, we have the texture here. We actually have are using the crop model um, built into M Crater. It's um, the model selection. You can select it down on this list here. Uh, it doesn't have a rotation. It doesn't need one and it doesn't need to be water loggable or um, any of the other settings. Um, you will need to set it to cut out and have transparent parts. Uh, but other than that, you can basically just move on to the next thing. Bounding box, this is where your settings are going to be for your crops. Um, by default, this is zero. So you want to set your minimum Y to something like 0 0.01 or basically anything higher than that. And um, it will basically allow you to um, fix that farmland issue. So. Make sure to set that up like that. Uh, I have it set to 0 0.01 and it seems to work just fine. All right, so your default settings uh, for this, I have these settings for the sounds. Um, I actually used, it, used a custom mute sound so I can mute this one. 
because uh, the crops actually have some different sounds now rather than just having it set to plant. So the first one for breaking is bl block dot crop break. And then the uh, sound on step is block dot gl uh, glass, glass step. That should be grass. Um, grass. That was my mistake. So that one should be grass step. Um, I'll quickly find that. Must have got mixed up with the wrong one. So block dot grass, grass, glass, grass, grass, gravel. Should be grass, grass. There we go. No, that's glass still, isn't it? Grass. There we go. Grass step. Easy to get confused. All right, so there's that one, and then the muted sound that I basically have, I've basically set it up so it's just a really quiet sound. It doesn't have anything really in it. It's just a small timeline with um, very low uh, muted sound. There's absolutely nothing in it. And then we have the um, grass hit. So this one has to be grass again, not glass. And somewhere around here grass hit so grass step grass place grass hit so that one and then you have your grass fall one which is when the when you fall onto the block so that's basically what you have uh, for your sounds I'll make sure to provide the custom sound in the file uh, for your hardness and resistance plants and crops actually have a hardness and resistance of zero so you want uh, that set up like that and um, you want to be able to walk through the block as well so make sure to enable this for all your stages again all these settings are pretty much across all the different stages uh, creative tab you don't really want it in your creative tab so disable that and for the material just set it to plants uh, you can name it whatever you want that's fine and for the custom drop um, what you want to do is you want to set this to one and um, basically have it not drop anything um, uh, I've actually disabled the um, have I disabled it no I haven't yeah I don't know what I'm doing here this sh this might be needed to be set to one uh, I'm not sure I think it's through script so I'm not sure exactly if this matters too much uh, it might not matter but in the case that it does matter just set this to one else just set it to zero uh, for the tool able to destroy this is unspecified it doesn't really need to but the harvest level is set to zero so that's basically all that's on that page uh, for your tick rate you want to set this to one you want to set your um, block on cut block color on map set to foliage and then what you want to do is you want to um, for reaction to being pushed set this to destroy that's how regular crops are set up if you want to set any particle effects or anything like that you can do that if you want uh, for the MBT you want to enable this uh, because we will be using MBT set the um, size of inventory to zero because we're not actually going to have any inventory slots for that and then you want to disable these two bl two blocks right here these check boxes and then you're ready to go on to the next one there's no fluid or energy storage we don't need that and then we have a few different um, triggers that we have for the block so the first one is one block added uh, we have a couple things that we need to configure here this is actually where you're going to configure your uh, total growth time now what this is going to do is control how um, long it takes to actually update between stages higher numbers will increase the time that it takes to grow uh, lower numbers will basically lower it so if you want something where it is right now it takes a couple hour uh, hours in game to grow um, maybe a couple days depending on how long it takes but then this is 400 you can increase the number if you want it longer you can decrease it if you want it shorter uh, outside of that you don't actually need to worry about all the extra code that is minimized like this all that is basically configured uh, through the things that are visible so in our case this is basically the only setting that we need to configure in this file uh, one thing that I want to point out as well is that the 
actual block added is only for the first stage for your crop. So make sure not to add it for anything above your first stage. So stage zero um, is the only procedure that it requires. So again, this is our first one. It goes all the way to our seventh one, but only stage zero is needed when the block is added. So this is the only one that uses it. So I just thought I would basically point that out. Uh, the other thing is update tick. Now again, there's a lot of script going into this, so I will try to cover what it all does. So right here, we have the growth condition. Uh, we I'll cover the growth condition in just a couple moments, but we'll, um, you basically want to call and get this return value of this and set it to your a local variable called um, uh, logic light growth condition. So this is going to basically control the light levels and whether it can grow or not. Uh, the other one, other condition down here is basically the uh, number growth, growth condition. So basically what this will do is it helps determine if um, the crops are surrounded by eight um, farmland and if there's no other blocks on the either side of the thing uh, of the crops that will basically prevent it from growing. If you fill an entire field up, it will actually be slower than if you were to do a line of crops and then space it with empty uh, fields and then do another line. So that's basically what the score uh, condition basically does. Uh, then we have a couple different things. We have block soul sand. So this is basically the soul sand block that you want to add. And then we have the farmland, which is the farmland block. You want to make sure that these two vanilla blocks are set up. And then for your different stages, all these variables need to be the same. So stage zero, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, stage five, stage six, and stage seven. So you have to add all your different stages for your blocks here, which means you need your blocks made before you can actually add this procedure. The other two things that you need to do in this procedure is basically run these two scripts down here. So um, alien root not fully grown drop and the alien root fully grown explosion drop. So these are basically going to act as your drops for when the block is uh, broken or anything like that. So make sure to run those two particular procedures. I'll cover those in just a second. I'll leave this up. And then you have your um, two procedures down here. Those are the ones that uh, should be this one and that one. So not sure, let's see this. Um, yeah, this is our alien root, not fully grown crop. So basically you just need to add your seeds for your items in this one. And then the other one over here is your um, alien root not fully grown drops. So this one is again your seed condition. So it should be the same thing as the other one I think. Yeah it's the same procedure that I've basically linked it to so it's the same one as this. And uh, that's all that's basically needed for that generation, no generation. So let's move on to the last stage because all the stages between zero and six are pretty much the same thing. Um, stage seven is a little bit different because it's the fully grown one. So pretty much the same settings all across up to uh, the conditions, which is this one is a little bit different. So when the block is fully grown, what it's going to do is it's going to, if it's exploded by, um, an explosion or something, you need to set your seeds and your um, your actual food item, so it drops that. Uh, for the other value here, you have destroyed by player. It has, I think, the similar. This one's a little bit different. This one has uh, when it's destroyed by player. Now it's also taking into account uh, the seed um, distribution values so this is where the fortune and stuff will actually play effect on it so if you have a fortune 2 or fortune 3 pickaxe or some type of tool 
and you break the crop with it, then it will actually give you more seeds back, uh, but still the same um, same uh, crop value return. So that's basically why this one has the world entity and this one only has the other one. So these are actually two different procedures right here. Uh, the other one here, um, update tick, this is a little bit different. Actually, I think this is the same thing. So basically what it's doing is it's basically just detecting the growth. So this is just one solid procedure. Um, you can link that to the um, one that you had in your other stages. So those are all your different blocks. Uh, again, all the different blocks from six to zero are basically set up the same way for the procedures. Um, don't think it's actually any different. And then you have a couple different other things. So you have your items, your seeds are in here. Uh, triggers, there's actually no triggers for them. It's all done on the um, uh, block side, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, we'll figure that out in just a second. So basically you wanna select your Thing, set your properties. You might want to set this to 64, put it in under a creative inventory if you want. But uh, outside of that, that's all that the seeds have. Uh, for the food item, it's just generic food item. You can do whatever you want with it, nothing special. And the tags, you will need to set up some tags. Um, now, the tags are basically for um, alien crops. So this is basically the crops that I'm basically adding. And then you want to set um, it under your mod namespace and then or whatever namespace that you want. Now you'll need to make sure that you have the namespace the same and the alien crops when you're actually inputting it into the code. But um, when you're actually setting up your blocks, make sure to set all the different crop stage for that particular crop type. So that's that, and let's go into the procedures. There's item procedures, and here's the seeds one. So this is actually run on a global procedure uh, for player right clicks on block, and then you wanna set your seed item, and then your, your first stage for your block. So this is stage zero, and you also want to test, or test for the um, farmland, so you need to set the farmland block here. So if that's all true, then it's going to basically plant your actual seeds and consume it and everything like that. Again, you only need to update those particular parts for it. Uh, bone meal is basically the bone mealing script. Uh, you need to set your bone meal uh, for the item, and then you need to set all your different block stages from zero to seven. So after you've done that, you can move on. Um, another thing that you might want to keep in note of is all the um, procedures basically I've added. I'll, I think I have a document somewhere around here that has all the different variables I've used. Uh, if not, I'll make sure that they're in a document in the workspace when I actually export the procedures and stuff. And then you guys can just type out the same um, local variables and stuff because uh, the current version for the local variables is um, not working, you actually have to type it in before when you're importing the local variables or the procedure because the local variables don't actually load in properly with the procedure for some reason. But um, that's only this particular version. It will actually work in the next version uh, for 1.17. So um, yeah, that's basically all you need in that one. And then you have um, your block procedures. These ones are the conditions for your light growth. So again, we're just testing if the light growth is greater than nine, equal to or greater than nine. So if the light level of the block at the current location is equal to or greater than nine, then we want to return true. If not, then false. And that's that condition that we had in the um, update tick, I believe, that we were linking to. And the other one is the growth one. So this one, is where you basically need to set up your tags for your, um, that tag for your namespace. Uh, this is your namespace here for your mod. And this is the namespace that you need to put here. So if you're using forge, then make sure that this is set to forge. Um, no spaces, you don't need colons or anything like that, just the name. 
and you're fine to go. Uh, the text, the text tag, which is this one right here, we used alien crops. And again, same thing, no spaces or anything like that it needs to be the same exact way you fill out your tag. So this is basically what you put here. And again, you need farmland for the for this particular test. And it will actually return um, the value of the score and uh, bring it into the other procedures. So basically that's what that is. Again, I'll make sure the local variables are set up in a document so you guys can use that. Um, let's see here, blocks and the tall grass we haven't covered yet. So this is for when you're actually breaking tall grass blocks. So it's running on a local procedure or global procedure, a block is broken. And then you want to set your seeds for the item. And then you want to set the blocks for your fern, tall grass, double fern, and then double tall grass. So those are the ones right down here. Again, local procedures. And normal dropping. I think we've covered all that. Uh, update tick. Yeah, we covered the update tick. We covered all the different dropping mechanics and the block added. So that's pretty much all the other things that we needed to cover. I don't think there's anything other than that. We have our item ones. We covered the seeds and the bone meal. And uh, uh, yeah, so I'll make sure to write down all the different local variables. Uh, they will have to be set up the same way uh, for the same names and stuff like that for it to be properly imported. So I've been actually adding a lot of the ver local variables I use in the um, in a text document so you guys can easily use it for this particular version. Um, other than that, uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.